Well, good afternoon, everyone. So today we're gonna to talk about six common mistakes on the Common App that are super silly mistakes, shouldn't be happening, and can cost your kids a seat at their dream school. So we're gonna do this a little bit different. I'm actually going to show you a Common App account. I'm gonna show you where these mistakes typically frequently happen so that you can ensure your child is not making these mistakes, okay? So in, I've created a fake Common App account. Um, when you open up a Common App, let me turn our camera here. When you open up a Common App and you start filling everything in, you'll notice in the left-hand side in gray, you're going to have all of these tabs that need to be completed. Once they're fully completed, you'll see green check marks for each one of them. Don't let a green check mark fool you into thinking it's complete. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here. So my dog's going to college this year. Here's his account. We have his name. Notice I left blank a middle name. If your high school transcript is going to have your middle name on there, your Common App should too. This is your child's first impression with a school. It's their opportunity to really show the school who they are. And when things that are not required, notice that there is a red asterisk right here for first name, first given name, but there's no asterisk for middle name. Just because there's not an asterisk does not mean you don't fill it in. It makes it look like you're a slacker. You're trying to take shortcuts. No college is looking intentionally to enroll slackers or kids who wanna take shortcuts because those are students who often aren't able to come back second semester because they haven't done well enough in class. Their parents may be the ones saying, hey, look, I'm not paying for C's and D's. You're gonna come home, go to community college. So statistically, students who fill this out most completely are the students who also have demonstrated their success in the classroom and so forth. So don't let your child think because there's no red asterisk, it does not need to be filled in. Again, without those items filled in, you can still get the green check mark, does not mean it's complete the way the college wants to see it, okay? So they have a lot of other um, pieces of information here. This is all, under profile. Now notice, all of a sudden now we have more tabs under profile. We have to go into address. They wanna know if you have an alternate address, contact details. So this is another area super important for you to take a look at. Preferred phone number, it's perfectly fine just to put a mobile number in here and put that mobile number. And it's perfectly fine to list no other telephone number. Schools routinely do not call. They may, they'll ask for text if they're able to text and some will text, very few are, are utilizing text still. Um, but you do not need to put a parent's phone number in here. They're not going to call. You don't need to worry about that. You can hit no other telephone number and hit continue. Most families don't have a secondary line, like a home phone line, so that's perfectly fine. They're going to ask a lot of other questions as well. Um, legal sex, it has a red asterisk. U.S. Armed Force, Forces status does not, but you should still fill this in correctly. Hispanic or Latino, fill it in. They wanna know, regardless of your answers to these questions, please indicate, indicate how you identify yourself. So I have had families ask, if they don't identify themselves, does that give them a better opportunity? Because the school doesn't know for sure. It doesn't. It, again, gives them the impression that you're trying to hide something, that you're hoping it'll give you an advantage. So you always want to fill in the right category for each of these things. Now, I had already been filling stuff in, in in here to show someone else. But when it comes to which best describes your background, again, it doesn't have a red asterisk, but you should fill it out. And maybe this is multiple things. Um, if you are um, Asian, it will give you many options. 
And again, you definitely wanna make your selections accurately. And you can pick more than one, as you noticed a second ago, Asian and white were both selected. So based on both parents, you can pick whatever is accurate. It's not one or none, all right? So here's a big, huge mistake a lot of students make when they're asked to fill this out on their own and then we're going over it. It asks for the number of languages you are proficient in. I would say at least 95% of our students come in and they've selected that they are proficient in one language. And then I ask them, how many years of foreign language have you had in high school? And many will tell me it's their third or fourth year. And it begs the question, if you've been in a foreign language already for three years, are you really going to tell me that you can't read it or write it or speak it proficiently enough to have a conversation, ask directions and so forth? Because then schools wonder, what have you been doing in this foreign language class for the last three years? By then, you should have some proficiency, maybe not all of it, but certainly at that point, you should be able to speak it and read it by the end of a third year of a foreign language. So I encourage students, don't miss that opportunity to show that your foreign language class has led to some proficiency for you in this area. It doesn't have to be everything, but please note what it is. They do ask about your geography and nationality. And again, let me push the screen up here. They wanna know where you were born. Again, leaving this blank does not favor the, the outcome that you're going to have. It just makes it look like the kid didn't take the time to ask his parents what city he was born in. Like he didn't bother filling this out completely. That is the impression, his first impression he's making with the college. So none of these are to be left blank, even if there's not a red asterisk. Again, number of years you've lived in the United States. For most of our students, it's going to be their entire life. Make sure that if you are turning 18 on September 1st, and you're, well, now in this case, let's say September 10th, you're turning 18 on September 10th, and you're not submitting this until after September 10th, make sure you change the number of years from 17 to 18. Make sure it corresponds with how old you actually are. It asks for a social security number. The social security on the Common App will be used to match up your FAFSA, Filing Financial Aid, which opens October 1st. So it's a good idea to put your social security number in here so they can match your Common App account with your FAFSA filing, and it's the most accurate measure for them because ugh, there are a lot of similar names when they're trying to match those things up. Often it's an undergrad in the school who's working in the admission office trying to match those things up. And so you want to give yourself the best shot to have your application as complete as possible as soon as possible and get your financial aid award letter in a timely manner. So it's a good idea to put it in there if you're comfortable doing that. Again, we're still in the profile section here. It asks if you have a Common App fee waiver. So most students may get, most students will not have this. Some students may get a school specific fee waiver. Say you're on a visit. And at the end of your visit, they tell you, oh, use the code VISIT21 and um, we'll waive your application fee. That is not this section. This section is reserved for students who may be on free lunch plans at school. They may have another financial need and so they've been awarded a Common App fee waiver. This is usually done through their high school. So, most students are going to check no here, all right? And hit continue. Now you'll see we've gone through all of that and our profile has been checked off in green. The family section, education, testing, activities, writing, they are not green yet. Those are all additional sections. 
Um, the family section, moms, dads, you're the ones probably watching this right now. This is your job. And I'm going to show you why. Your children will not know the answers to most of these questions. And I apologize, I'm holding this, trying to go through this with you. Um, so it asks if your parents are married, who do you live with? It gives you the option for both parents or parent one, parent two, or a legal guardian, an other. So let's say both parents at this point um, is the correct answer. The do you have any children? This is if your, college, your high school senior has children. Not you, your high school senior, if they have children. Okay, in this case, it's a no. And then we hit continue. So then it asks questions about mom. Now this is a big, huge red flag for colleges because a lot of this does not have red asterisks and kids are really bad at filling this out. They leave a lot blank. It asks for um, like a mother's maiden name. It asks for a preferred email. They're not sending parents emails, but once again, this is your child's opportunity to look like they can completely fill things out and not leave blanks. So they want to fill all of this out. Phone number, let's face it, they know your phone number, so that phone number should be in here. Their occupation, I cannot tell you how many kids come in and when asked, oh, what's your mom's occupation? What's your dad's occupation? How often I hear, oh gosh, they do something in business, but I'm not really sure exactly what it is. So again, mom or dad, you should be filling this section out. They give you a drop down, and there are careers on here kids haven't even heard of that their parents may or may not really be doing. So fill this out for your children. Um, once you fill in that you have graduated from a college, it's going to ask you how many. Then they want you to look up the college, and so if we go in here, we'll just pick the first one here. It will automatically populate that school. But then they wanna know how many degrees did you receive? What degree and what year? So it's again, very unlikely that your children are going to know this for both parents. And so you definitely wanna take the lead with this. It'll be the exact same for parent two. When we go to siblings, it's going to just ask for name and age. I've seen students fill this out and their brothers and sisters, and this is a really common thing too. Their brothers and sisters' names won't be capitalized. They're all lowercase. Parents might be capitalized, but siblings, not at all. Again, not a good impression. So make sure that your kids are really, attention to detail is so critical. And I can tell you, this is kind of frustrating for kids. I mean, we've been doing this now for a little over 10 minutes and we are not even into, you know, halfway through that second section. Um, once families filled out, it will have a green check mark. Then it goes into education. So again, you'll have your school on here. You will show your date of entry. Um, it's a calendar click. Don't try typing it in. You wanna click the calendar. You'll pick the year you started high school. You'll pick the month you started high school. And then it, did you or will you graduate? Yes, graduation date. You know, most people don't know what their graduation date actually is. Is it going to be May 28th or is it going to be June 3rd? If you are uncertain, put June of 2022. The reason the college is asking for this date is so they know when they are likely to receive the last transcript, the senior year transcript. So I like to put June so they're not expecting it any earlier so that they're not wondering where is it, if your application needs to have this before you come to orientation or something like that. So if you're going to error, error on selecting June rather than May. No change in progression means that your child has gone 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. They have not skipped a grade, nor have they been held back a grade. They've done it in the proper order, what everyone anticipates, okay? That's, and so they should check, no change in progression. 
and then you hit continue. They want to know if you've attended any other high schools during that time period. Now, some of you may have a child who attended a vocational school that's affiliated with your school district. They did not attend another high school, even if they went off uh, off site. So for instance, here in the greater Cleveland area, in the area that I'm in, there are two vocational, three vocational schools that a lot of students do attend. And they may attend them half day. They leave their regular high school and they travel to Polaris or Lorain County JVS or West Shore. That is not attending another high school. They are still only attending their high school. So it, we would mark zero here. Another high school means that they've transferred schools. Colleges and universities. A lot of high schools are really utilizing dual enrollment programs. In this area, a lot of times they're called College Credit Plus, but they're dual enrollment. Your child is taking a college class. It could be at their high school. It could be at the local college, but they're getting college credit and high school credit. You would list that here. So if they are going, to, they're taking a community college course, even if it's at their high school, you are going to want to put, yes, one college that they've attended outside, and we would put in um, the local community college. And again, you start typing and it pulls it up. So Lorraine County Community College, we hit continue. It populates it. And then we would list that it is dual enrollment. Now, sometimes you may have taken a summer program. And again, you would list that and click for that summer program to be put in here. So you may have two colleges if that's the case. Your date would be, most students start this their junior year. So junior year would have been 2020. And we typically start school in August, so August of 2020. If they're taking these College Credit Plus or dual enrollment classes all the way through graduation, so every semester, I, oh, and I messed it up here. We're gonna list that it'll be through 2022 and it'll be June of 2022. There will be no degree earned unless in fact they will have enough credits and you are planning to matriculate that associate degree, okay? All right, graduating class size approximately. Please have your children ask their guidance counselor. I can tell you having worked in college admissions, it's somewhat frustrating when you're getting out of state applications and maybe you have a couple of kids from the same school and one says the graduating class is 500 and the other says it's 230. And now you, the admission person feels they have to do a little bit more background on it and it's more work for them. So please try to make sure they're as accurate as possible with that. And you're, that's a quick email to the guidance office and they can provide that graduating class size. If your child does not have class rank, so many schools have gone away from class rank, it is perfectly acceptable to click none. Don't leave this unchecked. Again, it just looks like your child wasn't willing to go in and find out that information. GPA reporting scale. This is a challenging one for a lot of students. The overwhelming majority of students we see are on a 4.0 grading scale. Not all, but most. And often because they have a 4.4 or a 4.7 or even a 4.1 because of weighted classes, they think they should pick a 5.0. It is not a 5.0. They're on a 4.0 grading scale and because of weighting, they are able to exceed the actual grading scale. When you put in your cumulative GPA, again, ask guidance what your unweighted and what your weighted are. Use whichever one's better. Weighted is not always better for students. Use whichever one is better and then make sure you click the correct button. Don't just assume like, oh, we should put weighted and put it in here. So, make, and if you pick unweighted, make sure you click unweighted you really want to be accurate with that because they are receiving transcripts from your school and they are trying to match this information up. And the more it deviates, the more frustrating it is for them. There's a human component. So the more accurate you are, 
the easier your application is to review and the more they like you automatically. Um, current or most recent year courses. They want to know what your kid is taking this year as a senior. And so that means both semesters. You're going to want to list if they have a lot of one semester classes, let's say that they're taking some dual enrollment or college credit plus classes. And this first semester they have college comp one and next semester they have college comp two. And then at regular through the high school, they have AP calculus AB and they have AP physics but then they have a one semester business class and they have a one semester health credit and so forth. You have to list all of those classes. Most of our students, because of that, because of having so many semester classes, not full year classes, they'll have eight or nine different classes. And so from the drop down, you can pick the number of classes they have. If you're on semesters, most schools seem to be, but again, you may be on trimesters or quarters. Here's another note. You are not on quarters if your classes run semester long for any electives or dual enrollment classes and everything else runs a full year, even if there are quarters within your school. Here's why. You may have four quarters to your current year. You get quarterly grades but your GPA, your cumulative GPA, only changes with semester grades. So you may have a, um, a business class that runs first semester. Something else takes its place second semester. You're on semesters even if you had those quarterly grades, all right? And check with your guidance counselor if you're unsure. But what they're looking for here is the schedule of which your grit, your cumulative GPA is really changing or your classes could change. And most schools don't change classes on the quarter. It's usually at the semester. Here's another big mistake kids make. Do you wish to report any honors related to your academic achievements? I have seen kids come in where they've listed every honors class. That is not this. This is not to list honors classes. There's another area that that may be applicable, but here, not the case. They're looking for National Honor Society, National English Honor Society, National Spanish Honor Society, any academic honor or award you have received. It also could be honor roll or a high honor roll or summa cum laude. Um, those types of accolades, this is not for listing your honors classes that you've taken. If you are on National Honor Society, that is a national recognition. It is also a school recognition. It is not a state and regional recognition typically. All right? Community-based organizations. Community-based organizations are organizations that are helping your child um, through this process and not receiving any pay for it. So again, this is typically stuff that is afforded to students who are um, on a free lunch plan at school and things like that. And then future plans. A lot of schools determine your acceptance based on the program to which you are applying. If you wanna get into engineering, you need to put engineering. It's often difficult to transfer into engineering if you were not selected for that program initially. So you don't wanna pick something that you think, oh, well, no one applies to this. I'll put that, it'll be easier to get in. That's not the case. You still need to meet the school's requirements and you want to get right in. Nursing, engineering, business schools, Often, you need to apply directly into those programs. It is to your benefit to actually put what you're planning to major in. Highest degree, this is not critical to their acceptance. It is more the school wanting to know what they're looking at, unless, of course, you are applying to a four plus one program or even a four plus three medical program or three plus four medical program. So if your child is applying to an advanced program, a BSMD program, Penn State has a great BSM MBA program. 
if you put you're only looking for your bachelors, that's a red flag. So be sure that you're filling this out accurately. Then you'll hit continue. Testing. Let's talk about testing. If you're going to allow schools to see your ACT and SAT test scores, you want to check yes here. But this goes beyond ACT and SAT. I've had students who have had fours and fives on six AP classes and they've checked no. Gosh, my first impression, I want people to know that I've taken six AP classes and I've earned fours or fives on them. So be sure that you're not just thinking of this in terms of ACT and SAT. And maybe I'm going to put, you know, I've taken six AP classes and I'm going to take two more this year. It says right here to include tests you expect to take. If you have three AP classes listed in your senior year, because remember, we just filled out what we're taking for our senior year, and you don't list that you're expecting to take those AP tests, again, another discrepancy, another red flag. These are easy mistakes for kids to make, really easy. Maybe you've had a casual conversation, don't submit your scores. The kid checks no, and now the admission person's looking at it and going, you're taking three AP classes, why aren't you taking the test? Again, not the best first impression. It shows that you can just drop down, pick the subject, pick the score. Anything that you took this past year is probably May of 2021. The year before is May of 2020. And anything that you're planning to take, which I always list planned classes last. I wanna show scores first, list what is planned last, and then I would be picking May of 2022 for my expected test date. And maybe I'm taking um, Calculus BC this year. I won't have a score. And then I hit continue. And then we get to activities. Now, the great thing about their activities list is that they have an arrow so that you can move your activities around once you have put them in there so that you have the most important activities first your it factor, your wow factor, those things that are more substantial. If you've done something that has been very um, time draining and you've done it all four years, you want that higher on the list. If you've participated in a canned food drive once every year for one hour a week, mm, that should be last on the list. It allows you a drop down. Now, a lot of times kids think activities are just, you know, sports, theater, things like that, but art, club athletics, um, career oriented, if they've done shadows or internships, community service, computer technology, if they've done a hackathon or they've uh, taken classes outside to or self-taught Java or Python. Um, cultural, I have had numerous students who have participated in cultural activities like Greek dance and things like that. Debate and speech, environmental, they may have an environmental club at school. Um, family responsibilities really limit that. Unless your child is really performing out of the normal family responsibilities, you don't wanna list this. If they babysit their little brother and sister every Friday night while you go out, that doesn't count. That's not really an activity that you're going to put on here. Um, foreign language, perhaps they are in Spanish, Spanish Honor Society, they are in the um, Spanish club at school. Um, for, that's for foreign language. Internships, again, career related. Um, may not be as career related as just something that they've done. If they're on the yearbook publication or other publications, ROTC, LGBT clubs, musical, religious, if they're very active in their church, they've done different things. If they've already had the opportunity to conduct research, this is where you wanna put that. Robotics, school spirit, um, science or math clubs or extra activities, um, social justice, student government, theater, 
Paid work is also on here. Other club or activity. So don't let your child not fill out all 10 spaces. Everybody should have 10 activities or pretty close to it. So they, you really want to go back and think about everything they've done. Colleges want kids who are going to be involved. You want to show them that you were involved, that you've been doing this all along. The more things that you can put that you've done 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, the more impressive. If your list is all just in the last year or this coming year, that doesn't, you know, show you your child's ability. It looks like it's just a resume builder. And you really want to show the things that they've done all along. So write that list down. I tell students to keep a list. Let it set for a day or two, kind of go back, look at it. Often things will pop into their head. And I always tell them to ask their moms because moms seem to keep track of it or remember those things. Um, once you have completed all of this, you get to the writing section. And the writing section will show you what schools require the Common App essay or personal essay and what schools do not. Every school requires it. If it says not required, that doesn't mean they don't want to see it. You want to put your best foot forward and you want to show them that you are willing to do the work. So just because it says not required does not mean you do not do it. Uh, it definitely gives you the best results when you do have an essay. It allows them, especially this time of year, if you're applying this time of year, in fact, anybody who's watching, put in the comments if your kids have already applied because you'd be surprised most of their classmates have not. Um, it has the seven common app prompts. I always encourage students to write their essay on another document, a Google Doc, a Word Doc, where they're going to have automatic spell check and grammar, and then to copy and paste it here. And then they will hit continue. There's an additional information section where they're asking about COVID-19 disruptions. You know, everyone has experienced disruptions. I would encourage you to encourage your child not to write anything there unless they had an immediate family member pass away, unless they, you know, there was some major disruption that was so incredibly different than everyone else experienced. You don't wanna just put the same, you know, you were like everyone else and you went to school online and it was very difficult. They already know that. Um, they also wanna know if you have any additional circumstances or qualifications not reflected, you can click yes here. If the college to which you are applying does not have a resume tab to upload a resume, I encourage you to put your resume in a Google Doc and upload it here, okay? If there is information, maybe your freshman year was terrible and then you got your life together and you figured it out for sophomore, junior year, definitely addressing that could be worthwhile. And again, it's case by case. You don't wanna make excuses. You never want your child to appear as though, you know, they're trying to justify poor grades at any point. But there are students that did struggle their freshman year and who rebound really well, but the cumulative GPA doesn't reflect that. So drawing admissions attention to the fact like, hey, look at my last two years, not so much that first year, could be helpful. And then you have the My Colleges section. And when we go into the My Colleges, each college has their own list of questions. Somewhat frustrating because again, they're asking you the same things. When are you gonna start school? Well, gosh, in the common app, it said fall of 2022. They're gonna ask for your admission plan. The school only has rolling. Do you intend to use a military fee waiver and so forth? But then they're going to ask you what you're planning to study. This is very specific to each school. They're looking for the exact name of the major. So it won't just be business. It could be something else within business, business analytics, accounting, finance, marketing, and so forth. An alternate choice. They are going to ask if you wish to upload a resume. This is where you'll upload it, unless applying to a school that doesn't have an upload button like this, all right? 
You have, um, they want to know how you made contact with the school. Oh, if you wish to be contacted, they'll ask often if anyone graduated from the school, if you're a legacy. Um, they'll want to know all that information. They'll ask about your residency. They want to know, despite the fact that you've just listed all of this information, how long you've lived there and so forth on the Common App, each school has their own set of questions. Sometimes in these questions, there will be a hidden um, writing prompt. Uh, Clemson does not have a hidden writing prompt, but other schools do. Uh, let's see, on Wake Forest, if we go into their questions, they have a writing prompts down here and they ask a lot of questions and a couple of prompts. So just because you don't see, I'm trying to think of who has it broken out. Nope. See, I'm not getting cooperation here. Sometimes they'll have it broken out where it'll specifically say writing and you know that you have it. In this case, it's just hidden in these extra questions. So really go through that well so that you know for sure. Okay, here's one. Cornell has the questions broken out. So here's where their writing supplement is. And that's what you have to do. But don't assume that if other schools don't have it separated like this, that there are no writing questions. Often they're hidden within the college's questions itself. Sometimes those writing questions do not appear until you've selected that you want to apply to the honors program or selected a particular major. And then that will trigger a new writing prompt. So the biggest mistakes we see are kids not completing the applications properly. Oh, back to activities. This is something I forgot to go over because this is really a huge problem. In the activities, I, I mentioned how they're going to ask you, you know, what type of activity and so forth, and you should have 10 activities. They're gonna ask you for your position or leadership. Obviously in a club, if you're the vice president, super easy to put down, captain of something. But maybe you're just a member. It's okay to put member. Maybe, you know, you're a cashier, you're putting your work information here. It's okay to put that where you work or if it's the high school football team, you know, you'll list the high school's name and then football. You're not just putting football team. All right. This is critical. This description right here. You only have 150 characters. I cannot tell you the number of students who will just put um, played four years of football. Okay, first of all, that's not a complete sentence. And it doesn't, it doesn't lead to, you know, any, wow, you're really thorough kind of thoughts on the admissions part. I played four years of football, uh, two years JV, one year or two years varsity, and I'm expected to be the senior captain. That's a sentence. That's the information they want. Um, clean tables. No, I worked as a busser, um, cleaning tables and making sure everything was satisfactory for an excellent customer experience, something like that. You wanna add to it. You, don't, you can't add much, it's only 150 characters, but don't make it so short that it just looks like they're not putting effort into their application. So, I hope that was helpful for everyone. And I apologize for my shaky hands while I'm doing navigating both of these things. But I hope that was really helpful. If you have other questions, please drop them in the comments below. Um, feel free to message. It's You don't want it to sound like parents are writing this, but you also don't want it to sound like your kid doesn't care. And I see that so often. Students coming in and it's not complete. They missed a bunch of stuff. They don't have sentences in. There's no periods and make sure it's consistent. What you're seeing in one area of it should be consistent with the other areas. So like I said, if you have any questions, put comments down below. I hope it was helpful walking step-by-step, step, making sure everything is perfect. And I can tell you, most kids are gonna be like, mom, you don't need to look at it. I've been through it like six times. We, when we hit review and submit, you open the PDF 
which is exactly what's gonna happen in the college. They're gonna open that PDF, they're gonna print it, an undergrad's going to print it, and then that undergrad is going to create a file for your child. We go through that, we print every one of them, we go through them, and when we go through them, I can tell you, on average, we find minimum three mistakes. Not big mistakes. Activities all look like perfect sentences and one doesn't have a period at the end. We go through uh, all of the writing prompts. Oh, there's a double space here. Oh, this, you know, there's a the, the. Please go through these things. Kids aren't going to want you to. I got it, Ma, don't worry about it. Do it anyways. This is their one chance to make a first impression. And let's face it, if you are applying for a job, think about that first impression for your dream job. If it's their dream school, they've gotta take as much pride in everything they do on here, including periods at the end of every sentence. So hopefully that helped. We'll talk to you later. You guys have a great day. Good luck getting a look at your kids comment out. If you need any help, let me know.